This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. I don't recommend doing that anywhere in public. They're, they're very focused, and so if you were to use one of those, like on a tripod, point it at your target, uh, go to Botswana, or I'm sorry, Bolivia, Bolivia, um, then you might be able to beat the race condition. Even if they're right next to the router, you might be able to beat it. Maybe. It really depends. You know, it's a good thing that they're small enough to like hide places, too, I'm just saying. Does the processing power of the embedded device Yes, it does. And that's why we're really stoked to be using this new platform. We had previously used this platform based on an Atheros um, 2331, 2385. Anyway, there is this Atheros chip that's really awesome. I should probably take this opportunity to mention this software is hella cool. We've spent like years developing and making it awesome. And uh, one of the things that makes it so awesome is the, the fact that it can run this hacked Karma driver that's now based on host APD. And you know, you're thinking like, oh, that, that's freaking sweet. I've got a DDWRT router, an open WRT router. I got that old Linksys WRT 54G hanging in my closet. It'll totally like break that out and make one of these with it. And I so wish I could tell you that were the case, unfortunately. The way that it works is it's only going to work on an Atheros chipset, and that is not us being douchebags and limiting it to that. It's that in order to do the raw frame injection, what we actually need to do, the only vendor that's actually making radios, that one, gives us the, like, I wouldn't say APIs, but allows us to do that, or, or two, even the documentation to figure out how to do that is Atheros. So like, what, what to them? Uh, or I guess that's Qualcomm now. Uh, you might be able to do something similar with something called um, Airbase NG, which is part of the Backtrack suite. And it is it capable of doing something similar with like one of these, even though it doesn't do infrastructure, or I'm sorry, even though it doesn't do master mode, um, because it emulates it in user land. And it's able to do this even though it only has managed and monitor, but uh, it's hella slow. So I don't remember what the question was. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, so uh, originally we were using this one chip that, um, uh, uh, an AR2315, and it was only like 200 megahertz. Uh, and then what was really cool, and I, I, this could be a totally different discussion, on like the intricacies and the fun that is figuring out how to work with a Taiwanese manufacturer, and what does it mean to have FOB Shenzhen, actually not Shenzhen because they're Taiwan, but you know, to have container ships and, and value added tax and, and uh, duty and customs. Yeah, that's, that's real fun. But it was really cool to be able to work with a manufacturer on a, uh, on a board with a awesome chipset. And so this one is 400 megahertz instead of 200. But yes, you're right. The race condition relies on more than just the transmit power. Uh, you, you do have to have a speedy CPU. Could you look for APs that are not you, and send the off attacks against those, and then hope that the next time it comes around, they connect to you. Yes, in fact, that's exactly what we were showing with the uh, AirDrop NG, and that is, um, you know, you can write a custom rule that says you can actually specify in AirDrop NG. Um, not only am I, like, you can say like only allow these clients or those clients. You can actually base it on OUI, which means to say I can say only let iPhones connect to this and only let you know, things that are made by Marvell or, or Rawlink or, or D-Link or TrendNet or whatever to connect to those. And so yes, you can spearfish your client in that sense. And we also have, uh, if I go over to configuration, you'll see that um, there's the ability to blacklist and whitelist by SSID and also by MAC address. So if you had a target that you were just trying to, to, to get their device to connect to, you would um, probably want to use like AirDump uh, to, to find out their MAC address and then put it into here so that you're not wasting your processing power um, providing animated GIFs of kittens to the rest of the users. Uh, yeah. so, uh, Aeronet's the young people who they don't know about. Who does? Oh, yeah, yeah. So a lot of vendors will actually fight against this for their users. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, I, I got a couple of friends that have done pen tests in the area and have unfortunately found that out. Uh, do you work for them? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, what's the name of the client? Uh, Cisco, I yeah, Cisco's. Yeah. Uh, the wireless APs will be off people uh, who, if they aren't part of the group you define. So it will basically discover what's called, the industry calls this an evil twin. 
Uh, I think it's a little bit more than that because it's not just like I'm cloning Bob's network. It's like I'm I'm showing up as whatever you want me to be. Um, it's a chameleon in that sense, but. Uh, the, um, the essence of it is that those Cisco Aeronets notice, hey, that's one of my users. What is he doing connected to this guy? I don't know that guy. Deauth him. And so it's kind of cool. It's like a hacker attack, but for white hat stuff. Uh, oh, kittens, right? So, <laughs> sorry, that's, let me see if that is working. No, okay. Let me remove this. And in a moment, my uh, routing will change. And there we go. And now, oh, come on. OK, is anybody connected to Pineapple? Oh, there we go. All right, so that's what happens if you try to go anywhere on the internet. It's pretty cool. One of the tools that is on here as part of the Wi-Fi Pineapple or Yazaga suite is more than just Karma, but we've taken a lot of the awesome man in the middle tools from like DSNF and AirCap and things like that um, and put it in like a, a place with a GUI front end where you can easily do things like if I come over to configuration, I can see I have my DNS spoof host. And what I'm saying is if anybody go, tries to go to the website star.star, .star, which ironically looks like a kitten in ASCII, uh, take them to this website, which is the IP address of my server, which looks like That. <laughs> and so the shame of this, unfortunately, is it'll play the song on like a desktop or laptop web browser, and it'll do it on an Android, and I can't get it to do it on a frickin' iPhone, because iPhones don't support like MP3 streams or Flash. So if you know a hack, let me know, because I'm thinking maybe if I like tell it's an MOV, I don't know, they like those. Quick time. Yeah. Uh, we really are off the rails, aren't we? Are, are there any other questions about this stuff? Because I could just dive into this all day. Oh, well, we've got 15 minutes of film left, so let's, let's talk about protecting your guys' selves, because that's fun, too. So Wi-Fi, how, how do you feel warm and fuzzy with it now? Well, I guess you could forego Wi-Fi altogether. You know? um, I guess you could just go offline, actually. That, that's always an option. Uh, you could use 3G. Um, that's you know what I do. I, I use these for my laptop or whatever, and um, it's just because you know after having done this, I just don't trust anymore. Um, the caveat there, and I'll just kind of throw this out there in passing, and, and we could do something more in depth than I really want to, is uh, is this awesome tool called OpenBTS. If you're setting up a website or starting a new business, showcasing your portfolio or publishing your blog, Domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. If you need to register a new domain, consider getting a .com. A .com name is the original. We all know it's the best. It's globally understood and immediately gives credibility to your website no matter what name you choose. Plus, if you want to invest in and sell domains, .coms have the highest aftermarket value. Find new domains at Domain.com. Shannon and I love Domain.com because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use. Plus, Domain.com's social networking presence is huge. On Twitter, at Domain.com, they've got great customer support, and that makes it really a fun place to do business. So get this, the guys over at Domain.com want to hook up our fans with an awesome offer. Get 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code HAK5 at Domain.com checkout. That's 15% off and big savings. Don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5 when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Uh, is this awesome tool called OpenBTS, which allows you to emulate a base station of a 3G cell. Unfortunately, it's not advanced enough to do um, 3G. It's really only 2.5G, but whatever. Regardless, um, that's the way that the, the kind of like hacker scene is, is going. And um, so it's only a matter of time before we've got pineapples for cell phones. So that'd be fun. Uh, you could bring your own encryption, which you do, uh, with SSH tunnels. And, uh, or you could do a, a VPN. I love it. I did this demo for like CBS or something. They were like, like all of this, like, of course, everything I told them, they like just chopped out the scary bits. And then the narrator's all like, Wi Fi is doomed and all this stuff. And then at the very end, they're like, so get a VPN. Good night. And it's like, what? You know, you can't tell that to grandma. So unfortunately, again, like security and convenience, VPNs are not. Uh, that convenient for the hacker crowd, of course, we're going to have no problems with it. But also keep in mind that all that you're doing here is you're moving the endpoint. So if you connect to the Pineapple or the AT&T Wi-Fi or the GoGo InFlight, all of those open networks are inherently insecure. 
and it's the only way that they're really going to work in society, even your stream to the access point can be eavesdropped upon by a third party in monitor mode. Um, that, well, that's great fun hacker fun, right? Except if you, if you bring your own encryption, if you say SSH to your home, is that where you SSH to or are you going to Linode? Or no, he's going to Linode. Where are you going? I just go to my house. Okay, well then I, you... My ISP still spies on you. So your ISP still spies on you. So what you need to do is SSH into Echelon and then just kind of get it over with. Uh, but really, I'm just mentioning that you're really just moving the endpoint. So it comes down to like, where is your, uh, where's your paranoia level? Where's your comfort level? Like, think of it this way. Uh, I'd, I'd venture guess that half of all Tor exit nodes are run by some sort of government agency. Um, they are. Yeah. And yet people still use Tor. I mean, thankfully, there are internal dot onions, and there's at least that, but uh, where you don't have to use an exit node. But uh, think of the same thing with like, I like to use this service called um, uh, Weetopia. Uh, it's like $35 a year or something like that. And they give me this huge list of all of these different uh, uh, VPN endpoints that I can use around the globe. I pretty much just use it to watch the BBC iPlayer because you know the NSA is watching that. Uh, you can choose encrypted Wi-Fi. Like I mentioned, it's not going to work at the airport concourse. Uh, and the, WPA, the pineapple is not going to work against WPA, but of course, any remembered network at will, and there's plenty of those. Uh, also, and you can't see it, there's cut off, but remember to disable, or remember to forget your network when you're done with it, because unfortunately the state of the industry is that it's a manual process to remove that from your phone. Uh, Wi-Fi at home, of course you guys know, web's crap, use WPA, PSK, uh, two if you can, with a long ass passphrase, like Mary had a little lamb or something, put some spaces in there, make it Nyan Cat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, disable WPS because Reaver is awesome and, and no, not that Reaver. And yes, I did get my code on sale. Um, and encryption is only one layer. So it's like, oh, great. You know, I'm totally secure now because I'm using an SSH tunnel. But, you know, use also best practices, HTTPS, maybe you even want to go. The, it was so cool. Uh, at RSA, the NSA released the set of documents about how they secure their voice traffic over IPsec. So it's like, I forget the name of the protocol, but it's basically a encrypted RTMP stream over an encrypted IPsec stream. So it's like, they're just doubling up. So you might as well too, right? And also, I'm Sorry. crazy tinfoil hat and think the AES 120 is, but that's just me. Uh, don't be stupid. Twitterfisher.com is a website that I set up years ago. You would not believe how many people go over there. It says, welcome to Twitterfisher. Give me your Twitter username and password. We'll give you a shiny badge. And noobs, man. I mean, most of it's crap. Most of it's ASDF. Fuck you. But uh, you would not believe how many times people actually put their legit stuff in there. And it's like, what? Uh, be careful what you post with your friends. This is kind of, this is some of the stuff from South by Southwest. Those guys didn't know. We're just, they're oversharers. I'm sure that you guys know that Maltigo can pull your docs. Uh, awesome tool, look it up. It's uh, got a great GUI front end and it integrates with a lot of social networking for um, stalking people, I guess. Uh, Two-factor authentication, if you're not using uh, Google's um, two-factor bit yet, you totally need to. Uh, it's pretty awesome, it allows you to, um, to, like when you log into Gmail, you have to run an app on your phone and then enter in a key and then everything's secure. Um, you can move, like on Windows, you can use the sys, move the syskey, uh, or you can use the syskey utility to move your SAM over to a USB key, which means that you can't log into your machine unless you physically have the USB key, so now you have something you know, your password, and something you have the USB key. We just did a um, tool that does a similar thing for Linux on our latest episode of Hack5 with uh, AD of Dualcore and Chris of DoD.net. Uh, it's called um, uh, Hack All the Things, Drink All the Booze, Kill All the Humans. We might have been drunk when we came up with it. I don't know. Um, it works pretty nice. And then uh, HTTPS Everywhere is a plugin that the EFF sponsors, and it basically ensures that you're using HTTPS Everywhere. So it's kind of aptly named. Uh, full disk encryption with hidden volumes for uh, plausible deniability for crossing uh, borders. Uh, good thing to do. Or just uh, zero out your hard drive with like all zeros, because that way when a forensics investigator gets there, it's not even encrypted garbage. They're not going to give you the waterboarding. You just get across the border, and then you download a DD'd image of your own hard drive over a secure SSH connection. And, and then that way, I mean, it might be like downloading 16 gigs and wherever you went to, but totally worth it. Um, uh, install some uh, remote recovery stuff right now. Prey is the only one that I know of that's open source that I can vet. Uh, oh, oh, another fun thing about going across the country is, or going through borders is you could, instead of zeroing out your hard drive, you could put the uh, constitution in ASCII on the drive, like Moxie, but uh, then they don't like that. 
Um, and then nuke before you recycle. Use like Derek's boot and nuke to like re, uh, to nuke your hard drive before you put it on eBay because that's just good fun. Uh, so in conclusion, the human computer trust model is flawed. But then again, ultimately, so are we. And convenience is a curse. And computers aren't toasters. But come on, neither are we. So say we all. I'm Darren Kitchen. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. Hmm. How'd I do? I think that was the first, uh, first time doing a large workshop like that. Uh, I'm really glad that you guys were able to tune in, check it all out, let, uh, let us know your feedback in the comments below, and uh, look forward to some awesome stuff from Black Hat and DEF CON next week as we roll into the epicness that will be Season 12. All right, well, with all of that, uh, I'm Darren Kitchen, Trash Technolust. No, no, I kind of like did this. I didn't walk off the screen. Would you like me to? No. Well, should I exit stage left, Paul? Well, you, you I'm just gonna. I mean, you just go. Oh, well, I'll go this way. There's a, there's like a curtain. All. See? I'll just. Wah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Did you get me? All right. <laughs>